Good evening and welcome to Talking Who, the show where we're going to be talking live about what's going on in Doctor Who fandom, Doctor Who merchandise and of course the latest episodes of season six of Doctor Who, currently airing on BBC and BBC America. Now, uh, Elazar's away at the Cannes Film Festival at the moment. Gelazar, who actually created this show and is my co-host on it. So this weekend we have Dave. Hi. Who's going to be joining us for discussing the latest episode of Doctor Who. And uh, Dave is also one of the creators of the Doctor Who role-playing game. And uh, you'll be discussing it that with us a bit later, won't you? Oh, definitely. Yes, and uh, uh, also you have a uh, an internet show, don't you as well? Yeah. Unlocked? Uh, yeah, um, part of a group called Cheesemint, and we do a web series called Unlocked, which I'm gratuitously plugging with the t-shirt today. Um, yeah, check it out online. What well, can you tell us about the show then? Uh, if you like Spaced or the IT crowd or anything like that, then then you should like it. It's It's mm. very geeky. Very good for anybody who likes comics or video games. It's sort of a sitcom with some strange surreal elements too. Mm. And uh, how long have you been doing that show for? Uh, we started production, must have been about 18 months ago. It's been going on 18 months? We've only done six episodes so six far. Six episodes. But it was, it was a long time. And they're build available up. on YouTube? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes. Excellent. So you can watch those for free on YouTube in the vein of space, something geeky. So it should appeal to everybody who's watching this show then. Uh, definitely. Okay, now we're going to be discussing first the latest episode of Doctor Who, which aired on Saturday. The Curse of the Black Pearl. Ah, Nazis, pirates in Doctor Who. Kind of, <laughs> it's kind of topical, yeah. actually, when you think about it, with uh, the latest Pirates of the Caribbean film actually only out in another week or so. You have but to wonder if that was planned. You do, but at the same time, uh, pirates themselves, Doctor Who is appealing to a family audience. Yeah. And you've actually got to wonder why pirates haven't actually played a bigger part in Doctor Who in the past because what do kids love they love pirates and that kind of adventuring so exactly I mean um, later but the, actually the, the introduction um, example is actually the TARDIS landing on the deck of a pirate ship yeah so you've got to love pirates <laughs> okay I'm going to go I'm going to show the trailer uh, a little clip actually from Curse of the Black Spot here we go Yo ho ho! Well, does nobody actually say that? She's here. A demon out there in the ocean. She leaves a mark on men's skin. There is a monster aboard. Mount the ship! So there you go, that's the trailer for The Curse of the Black Spot. So what did you think of the episode yourself? Oh, it was great stuff. I mean, it was it was nice to, to reel it back a bit from the... Uh, yeah, that was my, my... The last two episodes were both very, very intense. Uh, they were great, but... Oh. Fantastic, but... <laughs> and what I felt interesting about the last two episodes was you really feel that Moffat is building this storyline which is going to go not by season, as it was with Russell T. Davis, but across mm. his entire tenure as producer... But it is nice to have breathers in between that as well. Definitely. A bit of classic adventuring. And uh, a bit of the... I always feel, whether it was in classic Doctor Who or new Doctor Who, every time they do a period setting, mm -hmm. that's when it comes into their own. Because BBC find it tough. Even now they're doing a pretty damn good job, but competing special effects-wise, sets-wise, so forth with American shows. Yeah. But the minute you do it into a historical setting, the costumes, the sets... The atmosphere nobody can touch them no the BBC's always excelled in their, their period dramas yes. so tying it in with this was just was just great and of course casting Hugh Bonville brilliant as of always course, he, yes. he was excellent excellent actor and of course you know very much known now at the moment for Downton Abbey mm -hmm, definitely and uh, I wonder if he'd um, if, if he'd shot this first or down Snabby first. Do you do yourself know? I don't know. With, with that beard, I'd, I'd, it's, a bit, <laughs> it's a bit tricky. Uh, I'd, I'd have said he probably did this first. Uh, and of course, quite exciting for all us male fans as well. Getting to see Amy Pond as a pirate. Oh yeah. As well. I mean, uh, that that certainly cheered us all up. I noticed there's already a T-shirt been produced with a picture of her wearing that outfit on the front. Mm. <laughs> 
Well, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much a lot of T-shirts coming out at the moment for Doctor. Usually it's always the Dalek-based stuff. But, uh, um, yes, I enjoyed the episode a lot. What did you think, though, of uh, Lily Cole? I, she, in it? She, she was very good. I mean, um, she didn't have to do an awful lot. She yeah. just had to stand there and wail and be ethereal. Um, um, and she was very good at that. It reminded me a bit like when they had Charlotte Jenkins in the Christmas special mm -hmm. where you've got a known celebrity who's known for something else yeah. not within the acting work world and uh, Moffat's given them a role on the show which is an is a role of impact mm -hmm. but doesn't really take any acting chops so it gets them the publicity for the having them in there mm -hmm. but they can't really go wrong no, no matter they're, what they do with they're it. certainly playing to their their strong points so yes. it's certainly with the, with the christmas special she was a singer so she gets to sing and and in in this one she just has to look slightly otherworldly which she does she does brilliantly <laughs> anyway so i wonder if moffat's got a thing for redheads oh, who doesn't <laughs> And what do you think of Matt Smith in it? Matt Smith is always brilliant. Um, the, the moment he appears in the episode, when they, they lifted up the little bit on the deck and it's that yo-ho-ho -ho oh bit, he just he just steals everything. And I, I, he's been he's been brilliant. He's certainly um, definitely my favourite Doctor to date, which is oh. quite controversial. Not necessarily controversial. What I'm actually finding very interesting with Moffat was when he was first announced, he was, what, 27 years mm -hmm. old? And it seemed ridiculous to have a Doctor an actor playing the Doctor so young mm -hmm. and yet watching him in the role I've never his, his age has never come you know he, no. he certainly brings the gravitas to the role that's required of somebody who's a thousand years old yeah and and certainly elements of, of Troughton definitely in yes. there as well now what we were saying before and as you said with uh, elements of Troughton this brings me dovetails me perfectly into the next point is pirates being so popular and yet pirates really haven't appeared before in Doctor Who since the smugglers mm. uh, back in what was that 1966 that story yeah. and it's actually one of the stories that sadly no longer exists uh, that's, a, that's a shame that's a shame mm. but I think well, it's 104 episodes still missing I, I don't know what happened I know it's always the great thing isn't it when whenever I only ask a Doctor Who fan what they'd do if they had a TARDIS it would be always that go back and stop the episodes from being lost yeah. <laughs> nothing more more uh, earth changing than that but go back and save those episodes ok we're going to have a quick look on Twitter and see what the fans were tweeting about this episode and so we've got at Abbey Queenfall does Stephen Moffat have a thing for redheads or what actually what I was just saying <laughs> Amy River Eye Patch Lady are they all the same person and at Cornix Regina the curse of the black spot was an emotional maelstrom of an adventure and Days, uh, Deborah Hazelt better episode than previous two. Oh, oh that's controversial that is controversial <laughs> at least it got it this time funny witty bit scary only downside was Rory was almost dead again <laughs> Yeah, they do seem to have a tendency of almost killing people off, mm. uh, and uh, it's it's kind of taking the drama away from it because you you it's like no, they can't kill them again, but 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 still still gripping stuff. Yeah, I have to say I enjoyed the episode a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I had a slight myself preference for the previous. I mean, the previous two episodes were kind of like probably for me one of the most epic starts they had had. Oh, easily to uh, start of the new Doctor Who but uh, I thought this was a very enjoyable change of pace mm -hmm. nice bit of comedy nice bit of swashbuckling adventure and I enjoyed it a lot In immensely so yes. yes so I think that gets a thumbs up from the two of us then definitely okay now we're going to uh, move on now with now you were saying to me before that uh, Moffat was actually complaining about spoilers yes being yeah. out there yeah there's, there's something in the news today about him complaining about people spoiling the series for them um, and as I was saying, saying to you before we started um, when it came to series 5 I knew everything that was coming because I'd read yes. scripts and so it, it was just as enjoyable to watch it but this year I know nothing well <laughs> one piece of information that is out and I hope you I hope you already know this and we haven't ruined it for you <laughs> but uh, the Cybermen are back mm -hmm. later this year the Silver Giants one of the most popular uh, probably the second most popular villain after the Daleks I'd say so are going to be returning to the show 
We've got a little photograph of how they're going to... The episode's called The Good Man Goes to War. Mm -hmm. And here we have a picture of it. Now, what I find interesting about this, two things. Firstly, if you have a look closely at this, the cyber leaders in the new series have a kind of like a black triangle market. On. Oh. Did you did you ever used to read Doctor Who Weekly? For a long time ago. Right, do you ever remember a character called Croton the Cyberman? Now that I don't, know. Right, because that's that was how they used to designate the cyber leaders mm -hmm. in the comic book of Doctor Who in the 70s. Ah, it's an influence. And I, I wondered if this was an influence, whether it was just a, a, just a happy coincidence or whether this was uh, an influence which had played there. Of course, the Cybermen in the comic books, Doctor Who Weekly, then Doctor Who Monthly, actually had names. Mm hmm and uh, they told the adventures of Croton the Cyberman who was a Cyberman who due to a malfunction had emotions ah, and came to a crisis of conscience with what he was doing as a Cyberman ah. and fights against it uh, but the Cybermen are back and apparently the Cybermen who are uh, coming back are not the alternate universe Cybermen. They're not Cybus ones. Yeah, not Cybus Cybermen. These are, they haven't said whether they're Mondas or Telos, mm -hmm. but they're from our universe, from outer space, yet they're still exactly the same they design still... as, yeah. Yeah. I think this is actually the longest period they've gone with one set of design of Cybermen. It's, without it's a, changing. It's a good new design. I do, I do like that. Yeah, it's a good new design, mm. but I still like yeah, it too. Uh, and, and I really don't <laughs> like the big C there. And yeah. I, I can understand why the Cybrus Corporation might stick a big logo on them. <laughs> but if these are outer space Cybermen from Mondas or Telos, yeah. it's, I, I, I'm not sure they should be having those ones. And, uh, you know, he, he, this is how the Cybermen last looked in classic Doctor Who in Silver Nemesis. Ah, excellent. And I've never, you, you want to know something? I. I had very fond memories of that story. Oh, yes. And then I picked up the DVD and I wasn't quite so fond anymore. <laughs> but, uh, um, and the last time the Cybermen appeared on our TV screens uh, was at the end of the last season. Oh, yeah, yes. But, but they have been keeping with this look of uh, uh, Cyberman, so... It's going to be interesting to see how this goes when the Cybermen return. And do you think... Now, this isn't asking for spoilers. This is your own conjecture. But do you think they're going to be tied in with uh, uh, this huge cliffhanger that Moffat's been talking about? Now, that, that I know nothing about. But, yeah. but the, the pacing of where the, the mid-season break is, it certainly sounds like it's going to be tied in. Yes. And there's a, I've, I've heard talk of Cybermats being mentioned I've later heard, on. I've heard but... talks of Cybermats, and I've heard talks of uh, a cyberman Sontaran war. Oh, that'd be nice. Which could be kind of <laughs> interesting. You know, maybe they had a lot of costumes lying around in the uh, uh, the wardrobes had to get used. Okay, so that's our discussion as we have for the uh, uh, latest season. I'm just going to have a quick look in the chat rooms. Now, we're on YouTube and we're also on new streams. So we're actually coming to you. So here you are, cutting edge of technology. <laughs> we're actually on the first shows streaming live I'm actually one of the first ones on YouTube so I'm having a look just trying to see if there was uh, uh, any if you've got any questions throw them in here we've got the message boards and it doesn't look like we've been getting any questions really so far so if you want to ask us some questions within the message boards though we'll be happy to try and answer them we're also on Twitter as well Now somebody's saying here, Leah Soros saying, I feel like something wasn't wrapped up with the Pandorica box, uh, the enemies teaming up together. Oh, and yes, uh, apparently the Ood, just being reminded mm. here in YouTube, in that apparently the Ood are going to be back next week. Have you heard anything about that? I, I know very little about upcoming episodes. I've been blissfully unaware and it's been a, a great surprise seeing things happening on screen. Mm. But all, all I do know is that it's Neil Gaiman so it can't be bad. Yes, well the Ood were very... They were, actually, I've got to say after the Weeping Angels they were probably one of the most popular... 
I was going to say monsters, but not really. Um, I think a monster would be no. a wrong classification for them. Uh, uh, alien. Alien. Yeah. Has there ever been in Doctor Who a returning alien uh, on this level that's a good guy alien? Not, not the leaps to mind. It would be nice to see an, an alien I'm, I'm companion. Think, I'm thinking possibly. Thals, maybe, but they were like very humanoid. Yeah. An Alpha Centauri, but you know, it seems to be. <laughs> well, she helped the Doctor out uh, in, in what what few ways she can. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on now to uh, have a look at a piece of Doctor Who merchandise. Get your opinions on this. Mm-hmm. Get your opinions on this. You can now get yourself at Forbidden Planet a Matthew Smith tweed jacket. A prop replica, replica of the Eleventh Doctor's uh, jacket. Very stylish. It's very stylish at three hundred and thirty pounds, though. That's the big question going here. What was what's your thoughts of that? I, I must admit, I did look for a shirt that was the same as as mm. he wears, and the actual designer label shirt was was over a hundred pounds. So, looking at a jacket that's of the same sort of posh design and quality well, what, what got me was you can get one at Ted, Ted Baker for about <laughs> 200 quid and that's that's a designer label Some somebody in the message board is actually says that she can get me one of those jackets for $20 down Chinatown <laughs> you might have to take them up on that one yeah I, pro- I probably will if I'm going to do a bit of cosplay I'll probably have to take them on on that okay we're going to move now on to our next section Fandorica which we have a look at ma- merchandise and what's going on mm-hmm. in fandom at the moment and uh, uh, seeing as you're with us here this week Dave I thought you could discuss with us your connection to Doctor Who and the world of Doctor Who and its merchandise as well Mm -hmm. do you want to show everybody what you've got there Um, uh, this is the the first edition of the Doctor Who RPG um, Adventures in Time and Space yeah I've got to show you clever a bit closer there there we go David Tennant being flanked by uh, um, a Cyberman, a Sontaran, and a Dalek. But of course, with you know something like that, you can create whatever adventure you want, or who actually whoever's in charge. I, I assume it's like done in the same style as Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, or something e- like exactly that. the same yes. sort of style as Dungeons and Dragons. Um, the the only emphasis in there is instead instead of the way that Dungeons and Dragons was a case of. Um, walking into a room and fighting a monster. Yeah. Um, this one encourages you to be a bit more like the Doctor, so you yeah, actually so have to... A non-violent approach to stuff. No, I, well, like Unit and Torchwood yeah. and that kind of sh- shenanigans can still go on with the guns, but, but the Doctor's approach is, is, is quite a nice change for RPGs. Yes. So this, of course, wasn't the first Doctor Who RPG. We've got a little picture here, flashback in time but it's it's been nearly what about 30 years since there was an RPGL mm, yeah. around did you ever play this one this was the Phasar Dot 2 role playing game which was released in the early 90s mm-hmm. when Dot 2 first came out to the States yeah uh, um, and it was actually pretty hard to get hold of in the UK it was very much an American product did you ever play that one yeah I, I have a copy signed by Tom Baker as well oh my goodness that <laughs> makes it worth even more that's it's sad but yes yes that's yes. great but uh, yeah, that that was that was a great game. It was very um, the, the the game master who ran it was the was the guy who introduced me to Doctor Who really? um, back back in back in school. Mm. John, right? Um, <laughs> and he played it very much like Call of Cthulhu. So, right, which yeah, that, that was that was one I used to play which, myself. As so he he liked it to be um, very uh, dark Tom Baker sort of era. So, so it was like a, the Philip Hinchcliffe. Yeah, era. definitely. Tons so of Wang Chiang, Pyramids of Mars, that yeah, kind of lots which, of skulking which around. Act- which actually fits in with the Call of Cthulhu type game, nineteen thirties demon hunting and everything. So definitely. And, and and there's a couple of expansion packs now. Is that now this this is the the updated edition? That's that's like, the updated core rules, which should should be out very soon, which uh, changes everything so to do, fit the Matt Smith era. Right. Yes. Is it so? But I I take it you could replay really it. Suit it around to any era you want to play it with. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and you've got a few expansion packs. How many expansion packs are there? Um, there, there will be a few. Um, there, right. At the moment, there's just um, one supplement, which is just on aliens. Right. Um, uh, but, but this one's coming out, I hear, Defending Earth. Yes, which is the, the unit source. I, 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 source I love material. to look at that because that is actually all the generations of the unit there yeah. together. You've got Jumper, we unit with. Uh, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, uh, Sylvester McCoy, Peter with Brigadier Bambira, and oh, then yes. you've got modern unit there. It's like the whole. Uh, I mean, just 
you know, if you don't play role playing games, I, I take it these are just worth it for the packaging and the whole look and the way they're done in set themselves oh, as oh, well. De- and definitely, and as a source book for information on the show itself. Well, you know, the characters and the story. And the mm-hmm. role, but the great thing about it is, it gives you a thing to create your own lore and mm-hmm. your own mythology around uh, the show. And, and hopefully, we're we're working on some more supplements which will yeah. take you through each doctor's era uh, and look at their adventures as well and uh, give you sort of guides and all the all the aliens and, and things that they they faced but also some guides and running them as your own adventures changing them slightly just in case you you have know, playing with some players who know the adventure very well from their, the, yes. the tv and you want to give them a bit of a, a, a twist and a surprise in there as well so so not only can you use it just as a as a game but also as a tv reference so as well. if somebody uh wanted to get hold of this uh what would be the best way to where i mean where do you suggest they go to get a copy um Good, good hobby stores that sell so they're D&D. Made, so they're pretty much available mm. pr- pretty well. It's not like they've got to go to very specific shops or anything. No, not not really. Um, uh, and also you can get it online direct from Cubicle 7, who are the publishers. That's it. Cubicle 7, the publishers. Mm-hmm. So that's the role-playing game. And uh, uh, if you're not into role-playing games, but you're a Doctor Who fan, that's a perfect introduction. Oh, yes, uh, it's, it's definitely. Fire up your imagination and enter into the world of Doctor Who. That's perfect. Okay, we're going to move on next to our next... Uh, segment of the show Mm -hmm. and that's the DVD review so we're going to review now sometimes we review the latest DVD releases the latest DVD release is actually the Mannequin Mania box set yes but I haven't really got around to watching that yet and gone through all the extras in it which Mm -hmm. there's a lot have you watched the Mannequin Mania Uh, set yet I've I've watched part of it see part of it not all of it yet so (laughs) what I thought we arranged beforehand we would have a look Instead, instead of having a look at Mannequin Mania, we're going to have a quick discussion about the Restorations 2 mm-hmm. box set. And what the uh, Revisitations. Now, what's interesting about the Revisitations 2, this is the second box set like this. And uh, what it is, is it's gone back to previously released stories, mm-hmm. but re-released them with new extras. And the Restoration team... These are stories that they felt that when they were released, the restoration job could have been improved Definitely. because technology has improved since they came out and they felt they didn't have a good enough set of extras. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this one, you've got uh, Re- Resurrection of the Daleks. Uh, uh, you've got uh, the Seeds. I've always get this wrong. It's the Seeds of uh, Death, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Because the Tom Baker one was the Seeds of Doom. This is the Patrick Troughton one, the Seeds of Death. And a carnival of monsters. So that's three stories, which have previously been released. What mm-hmm. What were your views I, I, on this box set? I, I, the, the revisitation sets are always a bit tricky because they they are previously released yes. material, um, but they do do a very nice job of cleaning them up. And the the extras are. I mean, when when they're initially released, there's not very many on those early releases. Yes, the early. Well, they, they were, what's what I find very interesting about the Doctor Who. DVD releases so they really have smashed the mould as it mm. were and if you look at the early releases even then you were still getting a lot more than a lot of TV box sets would give you every episode Definitely. has got a commentary mm-hmm. they still had a couple of extras sometimes a CGI option yeah. but definitely now we usually really used to about an hour's worth of extras mm-hmm. on every DVD my own feeling was the previous revisitations box set the first one is even if you own those, you've got to own it again. Even if it's just for the movie. Yeah. The, the extras on that movie disc, fantastic. Well, I thought the extras were fantastic on all three. As you mm-hmm. said, the movie disc came out with virtually no extras no. when it came out. And the new one, it's got a review of uh, Overlook of the Comic Book Period, mm-hmm. over how Doctor Who was kept alive uh, until the poll began. It's a whole slew of fantastic extras and a commentary from Paul McGann. Oh, yes on it with Sylvester McCoy <laughs> two doctors together what more could you want uh, um, this one is very interesting actually on this one we look at the extras on say Resurrection of the Daleks mm-hmm. very few of the extras are actually to do with Resurrection of the Daleks itself it's mostly yeah. extras just to do with the Peter Davidson yes era. it's a very interesting documentary on Peter Davidson hosted by uh, David, uh, Tennant. David Tennant yeah. it's almost like the centrepiece of the box set, it's you almost feel that it should be on a David Ten uh, on a uh, Peter Davidson box set, though, yeah. as opposed to a Revisitations one. The episodes look fantastic. They have been, especially the uh, uh, Seeds of Death. 
it's just what's your feeling on the seeds of death uh, as as a story as a story i mean it, it I, I loved it uh it's, did, it's it's one of those i love the ice warriors yes they're they're and they're that one villain that i'm kind of like waiting for them to bring back into new oh. who and see what they would do with them um i feel the design of them is very strong mm -hmm. and they just like with the daleks there's not much tweaking that no needs to no be do but just a slight bit of tweaking and they can no. make it fantastic i just feel it's one of those ones that's a six-part story it, it is a long one but... and it feels like they could have done it in like <laughs> four well, I, I have a particular fond po fondness for it because uh, it, it's the first Troughton that I watched right yes. um, and it's that oh, do I really want to watch I've never never experienced a Troughton story before mm -hmm. and it was a, such a pleasant surprise because it is it's he's, he's just brilliant the companions are, um, are brilliant in it as well and uh, as you said excellent villains as well it was I, I, nice I do believe Jamie McCrimmon it was it's between him and Tegan isn't it as the longest serving companion with yeah. the doctor and, and yeah Fraser Hines is brilliant as always mm. um, but but yes it, that is a great story and the bit of the foam always good mm. <laughs> it's such a shame that there is so much from the Troughton era <sighs> It's that is gutting. missing and you somehow get the impression it was uh, in season 5 his second season mm. that's some of the real best stories for him yeah. you know what, what remains is very tantalising now the second story on there is A Carnival of Monsters which is John Pertwee and Katie Manning as Joe Grant what did you feel on this story? Uh, I, I really like the, the bit when they when they get trapped and on mm. the boat and there's the yes. time loops and all all that kind of kind of shenanigans brilliant stuff i i must admit i didn't get on so well with the um the the real world so to speak you with didn't. the with the with the wacky outfits i i i, I, enjoy, <laughs> I enjoyed that because i just felt it's is classic robert holmes yes uh with he loves to write about bureaucrats mm -hmm. and he loves to write about showmen and lovable con men and I almost felt like they should have swapped Carnival of Monsters with the Paul McGann movie mm -hmm. between both Revisitations box set because then the first Revisitation box set would have become a Robert Holmes and who I'm talking about Robert Holmes here is the writer of this story mm -hmm. who I think is generally accepted maybe Moffat is his closest competition but he is accepted as probably one of the greatest writers oh, yeah. that yes. the that series ever had and as I said he what he's basically no, best known for is creating very kind of like loud colourful characters oh, just look at that with hat. amazing dialogue <laughs> and you know who really and this one also had the monsters the Drashics mm -hmm. uh, oh. who were ju ju just like apparently their, what was it their brains were so small they just, just could only just think to destroy things and Hulk attack smash. and <laughs> very much Hulk smash yes <laughs> now the final story on here is a uh, resurrection of the Daleks, and here we have this is the classic Peter Davidson uh, um, look with his companions, uh, yeah. Tegan and Turlo. What did you think of this story? Uh, it, it's a it's a good story. It has has a couple of great moments, especially the pushing the Dalek out the window. But it, mm. it's it's always a, uh, a a very good set piece for some soap stars to make their appearances. <laughs> <laughs> I always felt uh, Eric Savard as a writer he obviously I always felt that he was very much copying Robert Holmes' style mm. which I don't think should be taken as an insult oh, no. I think he did a very good job of it I always felt he never had a handle on the Daleks I felt he wrote the Cybermen very well like an attack of the Cybermen mm -hmm. I never particularly liked it I always, almost got the impression he was more interested in Davros yes. than the Daleks that was what he wanted to write about and that Davros would be out in the fore in his stories and the Daleks would very much take centre uh, back, backstage as it were yeah. as his like his henchman De definitely um, henchman on that one yeah good old Terry which, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm a huge Dalek fan I like to see Daleks out there exterminating yeah. as an indestructible force but um, and this, this one is interesting as well because as well as new extras when this, this story was uh, originally aired mm -hmm. they aired it instead of as four 25 minute episodes they aired it as two 50 minute episodes yeah. and 
they return it to that format on the uh, this video DVD release for the first. I think it's the first time it's being released in its two-part format. So you get get the choice of the two. Yes, mm -hmm. across two separate discs. So there you go. That's the revisitations box set. So if if somebody doesn't already own those episodes, it's a no-brainer. Oh, they've definitely. got to buy it. Yeah. But if they did already have the previous releases, what would you say to them? Possibly for the for the diehard fans right. definitely for the definitely for the documentaries they're, they're pretty good although there is a very strange extra on on the dalek story with uh i'm not sure exactly what happens in it is this very very short thing mm -hmm. and then this is dalek shouting at somebody for telling them about spelling or something like that very very odd <laughs> okay we're gonna walk move on to just a little uh a little peek at the next episode of doctor who uh, uh, which is, as you said, this one that you be saying is written by Neil Gaiman. Oh yes, and it's called the Doctor's Wife. Controversial, definitely. Yeah, so you know, do, so do you think we're actually going to meet the Doctor's wife, or do you think this is one of those teases, like when they said did an episode of the Doctor's daughter? Oh, I, I, no, it's going to be a big tease as always. But big tip, but the Doctor, <laughs> the Doctor did have a granddaughter, mm -hmm. so he potentially may have a wife out there. He may have a son or a daughter out there if he was having a granddaughter at some point. Yes, uh, or the, may, maybe this is all Moffat creating more spin-offs because we never <laughs> saw never saw Jenny come back. And of course, the, the Curse of the Black Spot, we've got that potential for a spin-off with pirates in space. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to show you a little little tea. Uh, next uh, episode of Doctor Who to whet your appetite. I've got mail. There's a living Time Lord sitting out there. The house, what's the house? We walk on his back, breathe his air, eat his food. And do my will. The little boxes will make you angry. Uh, ah! You're like a nine-year-old trying to rebuild a motorbike in his bedroom. You are not my mother. Why shouldn't I just kill you now? There you go, and as you saw at the very end of that trailer, we got a very quick flash of an Ood. Ood have thought it. Ood have thought it. <laughs> How very Ood of you. <laughs> uh, um, I kind of like to suspect, though, that what we're going to be having here is some tr some family travelling in time or just travelling in space, and they're going to have an Ood there as, like, their servant. Yes. That, so that that's, 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 that's what I suspect that it's going to be uh, uh, but I'm looking for I mean I think the Ood are hugely popular especially with the kids uh, uh, you've got a little photo from it I, th I think that's Amy Pond looking very worse to wear for there and that actually looks very much in the background almost like classic TARDIS designs well that that's possibly going to tie in with the uh, the news that was announced today about characters TARDIS set to tie in with well, this Blue Peter winner yeah there's a Blue Peter winner who's uh, designed a brand new TARDIS mm -hmm. and that's going to come into play. How do you feel about this when they use Blue Peter designs and stuff? I mean, we ended up with a bloody Absorbaloff, for God's sake, out of uh, Blue Peter. Yes. That wasn't good. No, the rest of the episode, fantastic though. I, I must admit, I, I love the rest of that episode. I did not but... like that episode. We'll have to disagree. We'll have to, we'll have to disagree. That for me was, you know, I'd rather watch uh, uh, The Creature from the Pit and go from that one again. That I, I was very disappointed like that. We, I believe we have another clip here from the Doctor's wife to oh. deal with. Doctor, something's wrong. It's how she's after the TARDIS. Just get out, both of you. We can't. You locked the door, remember? But I've unlocked it. Stupid well happened. <laughs> Doctor, I don't like this. <laughs> Open this door! Rory, hold my hand. Amy! Rory! Amy? Amy, can you hear me? Okay, right, I don't know. I really don't know what to do. That's a new feeling. 
there that looks awesome that does oh, that's cool stuff and I have to say there is just something about Matt Smith's performance he just seems to not since I'd say, I'd say he's even rivaling Tom Baker as the most doctorish definitely in my opinion in just his his mannerisms and his quirks and his very eccentric alien behaviour I just think he really is nailing I think the character beautifully quirks and eccentric definitely sort yes. of sums him up it's brilliant I kind of like feel when I watch Matt, Matt Smith almost though he's, he's almost trying to be like I always feel there's a sense of William Hartnell to him mm-hmm. as if you know as I said earlier that he's what 27 28 yeah. years old we all thought too ro- too young for the role as if he's channeling, channeling this old man yes within a young man's body and I, I you know I really do get this sense to him as if there is this gravitas there is this eccentricities mm-hmm. uh, um, an absent mindedness that you would get from somebody who's a thousand years old it certainly can be, can range from being completely bonkers to, to having a, a real depth and quite 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 mm. foreboding presence well I want to thank you for coming on the show that's alright no problem and, it's been a uh, pleasure uh, replacing Elazar for tonight regenerating from Elazar into Dave I was just going to say how can anybody replace Elazar <laughs> and uh, <laughs> please check out the Doctor Who uh, role playing game uh, available at uh, your local hobby store make sure you get a copy of that uh, I'm going to be back here next week I'm not too sure who's going to be in the chair we're going to be reviewing The Doctor's Wife we're going to be reviewing another Doctor Who DVD we may have it for next week it'll probably be for the episode after that we're working on an interview with Mark Shepard Excellent. at the moment oh, very to cool. broadcast on the show so thanks for tuning in and I definitely hope to uh, see you next week. And thanks very much. Thank you. Take care then. Bye bye.